lot of cuts and we're expecting a lot more. And it's really going to hurt our department. I know that I'm graduating and I won't experience it, but I can't just sit by and watch all these younger grades um, just experience all these cuts because art is such an important part in Chardon and in the community. And without it, I know my high school career would have just been completely unbearable. I really don't think I could have graduated without it. Um, this past Friday, we uh, heard, or this past week, we had heard about um, the dramatic cuts that were going to happen within the art department. And doing that, we wanted to create an awareness. Uh, last Friday, all the students, a majority actually, uh, dressed in dull colors just to show a world without art. Um, we got a petition going, and there was nearly 500 signatures here of people opposing the dramatic cuts that were going to happen. I know it's not important <coughs> to most, like to the government, as there's not like that many standards for art or gym or any of the extracurricular activities, but it's important to the students in our education. It's a way to express ourselves in healthy measures. It's not going somewhere and writing up math equations. That's not, that's not going to help like me personally. It's not going to help me explore who I am and what I can bring to this world. There's so many people who do so many things, but they don't have the opportunity to do so. Uh, you could be looking at the next animation artist or the next uh, Broadway actor, but without with all these cuts happening, who's going to know who that's going to be? What we need to do is we need to budget better. It's not, I understand that there will be cuts. I understand that. And I know they're necessary for the school district to keep going. But completely shutting down a, a department, only one teacher for hundreds of students, there's no way that we can be able to fully uh, excel in our abilities. Educators will receive the most dreaded piece of mail in their careers, a non-renewal letter, letter from their Board of Education. Yet they'll remain professional throughout, continuing to serve our students with their best effort. Presently, the guidance department, department is scheduling students for next year. Students signing up for art at the high school, as you heard Mr. Zidko speak of, or wanting to take French or Spanish as an eighth grader, or qualifying for the elementary gifted program will find their offerings either reduced or eliminated with no promise of return. Our student population spans across intelligences, educational needs, putting a strain on our general finances. School funding, as Kevin has tried to explain at his different meetings, is complicated and unfair. And it doesn't seem our state legislator des legislature desires to make good on their fiduciary responsibility to properly fund public schools. You, the board, are the stewards of our Chardon taxpayer contributions and must ensure the students receive a quality education with the resources allotted, requesting more funds when necessary. According to the five-year forecast, our district will need more money to fund present and future state mandates, teacher evaluations, third grade reading guarantee interventions, and student testing technological requirements. We teachers were called to this profession wanting our children to feel pride and success in their work. We also believe education is an investment, not a liability. And we need our community support to enhance our offerings, not just maintain or reduce them. For two years, we teachers have taken a complete salary freeze, meaning no annual step increases for experience no compensation for taking additional credit hours in our fields of expertise. No compensation for earning master or doctorate degrees. We still contribute the required 10% of our salary toward retirement. And when we do retire, we're hired back as substitutes for $85 a day. To further help reduce the district's expenditures, we increased our monthly medical premiums, we teach in Chile or low-lit classrooms to reduce energy costs to the tune of $480,000. We apply for competitive grants, charge students fees to fund consumable educational materials, and solicit parent organizations and local businesses for donations. Our 192 educators feel we are doing more than our part to keep this district financially stable 
and its academic success, success respectful. We are, it is more than just a job, it is our life. 